Okay, this how-to video is going to go through how to configure and define a relational database within ORCAD Capture CIS. So a relational database allows you to effectively have um, a different database table that controls multiple suppliers for your same company part number. There may be many instances where you have a single company part number that uses a manufacturing part, say a 1K resistor, but you have maybe three or four different distributors that can supply that and they all have a different part number. And you want to be able to include that information on your bill of materials so your purchasing people can choose from either distributor one, two or three, depending on their availability or their quantity on hand or their cost. So um, the way we would do this effectively is start off with a database. So in this example, I've got a, a simple relational database here. It's an access database. I'll just open this with Microsoft Access. So I've got two tables. I have a resistors table, which has all my kind of main properties in it for each company part number. So my company part number, res 0001. I've got um, effectively part number, part type, schematic part and value, which are the key properties that a CIS database needs. It's also got a PCB footprint, a description, a manufacturer, a manufacturer part number. And you can add properties here as, as many as you need. So that's my main property. I've only got two resistors in it just to simplify this process here just for the demonstration. Um, I've also got a distributors table and the distributors table effectively lists the key property, which is the part number. That's what we use to tie the relational database together. And then it's got different distributors and different distributor part numbers. So I've got two for 02, two for 01. If I wanted to add a new one, we can just effectively add the, the part number in. So that's the key property. This time I'm going to use RS and we'll use RS dash. For the 01 and we'll do the same for 002 so there's my two part numbers so I'll save my database I've effectively got three alternates for my uh, my, my basic two parts we then need to go to um, the control panel of your computer so we'll go to the control panel we're looking for something called administrative tools and then in here was something called ODBC data sources and it's the 64 bit. Um, system DSN is the important bit here and then what we need to do is we need to add a new uh, data source. So we're looking for the, the relevant driver. So obviously I had a uh, an ACC DB file type. So if I go back to the relevant driver, there's my ACC DB. Depending on the database you have, you might have to choose these. Um, also depending on whether, whether you've got like a 32 bit or 64 bit uh, office installed, you may need to install um, a specific driver to be able to get access to this. If you go to um, the Parallel Systems webpage, so parallel-systems.co.uk forward slash guides, there is a, an app note on this, or Capture CIS data sources, and this effectively describes where you can go and get the driver from Microsoft for to get this, um, because it depends on whether you've got a 32-bit or 64-bit installed. And then you need to download that executable, and then uh, run it from a DOS command prompt. So run the, the XE here with a slash passive switch, and then that will enable you to then create the data source that you need. So we'll click on finish. I'll give it a name here. So relational DB, my description, I'm just going to keep the same. And then I need to choose the database. So I'm just going to browse for that. There's my database file. Click OK. And then that effectively makes a data source in the list here. So I can then go and use that in Capture CIS. So once that's done, we'll go to CIS. We'll go to the Options menu, CIS Configuration. We'll click on New. Um, and then we go through the wizard, basically. There's a configuration wizard. So we'll click on Next. So I need to choose the data source name, the one we've just made. Mine was Relational DB. So we'll click on Next. It's listing the tables, so obviously my distributor table isn't a table I need to configure because that's where the relational database is. I just need to configure the resistors table, and if you add any other tables here, you'd have to do the same here as well. So we'll click on Next. I then need to go through the mapping process of mapping the four key properties. So part number goes to a property called part number. Value goes to a property called value. Part type goes to a property called part type. Schematic part goes to a property called schematic part. Your properties here in your actual database could be different, but it's a matter of getting the right table um, headings tied into the right table properties. I've also got a PCB footprint, so I'm going to enable that one. I haven't got a piece by model, so I'm going to click next. These are the properties that get transferred to the design, so we'll just use uh, description. We'll click next. 
Um, have I got any any browsable properties such like data sheet links or uh, models to 3D step models, for example? I can have it as a hyperlink in the CIS database. I don't in this example, so we'll just click next. Um, this is just almost like a, uh, a summary of what properties are going to be transferred to the design. What's my key property? Cadence recommends value being the key property. So when I'm doing searches in part manager, um, what do I want to use as the key property? Value is the one for that. We'll then click on finish. And then I get the, the configuration database, database window appearing. So I can then go and make any adjustments to I need that I've just been through in the wizard. So all those settings you've just been through in the wizard are available here. So you can make changes if need be. Uh, I've got a, a administrative preferences tab. So if I want to allow temporary part numbers to be duplicated, I can do that. There's a do not stuff option if I've got variant parts. So I always use not fitted. Uh, and then the relational database, which is the key bit here. So I've got a resistors relational table. So what's the key prop? The primary key is the part number. That's what we use in the database. And then the relational table is the distributor. So you configure those two up here. Click OK, and then I need to go and save it. So we'll just go and save this in the relevant location. We'll call this MyDB Steve. So that's the file if you wanted to give people to link to it, if they wanted to use your database, you could give them access to that DBC file. Then when I use place, and um, we'll just. OK. Z to place the database part. There's my relational database resistors. There's my resistor table. If I select this resistor, you can see there's my three alternates, RS, DigiKey, and Farnell. So I can effectively have that information available to me. So let's just go and place three of those down. We'll go to the database again. And place the alternate other part down. So I've got three 1K resistors, three 10K resistors. To output this on a bill of materials, I use the reports, CIS bill of materials and standard. So I've got quantity, item number, quantity value, part reference. Um, let's add a description in there as well. And then I also want to include the relational database. And you can see here, the relational database will effectively give me my distributor part number, and my distributor value. So let's add uh, my distributor and my distributor part number. So this is the relational bit I want here. I've effectively got, um, I need to include the relational database output here. So I've got here maximum number of rows. I've only got three, so we'll just turn that to three. I want to export it to CIS, to, to Excel, sorry. We'll click OK, and then this will then launch the bill of materials. And if we bring the bill of materials up, we'll just specify it a bit better. So there's effectively my, my quantity value, part reference, my description my distributor, my three different distributors and my three different distributor part numbers for each part number.